Hello and welcome. If this is your first time visiting, please be sure to check out my other repair videos. To support the channel for free, all you have to do is subscribe, comment, and like. Now let's get on to today's video. Hello, welcome back. If this is your first time visiting, I appreciate you guys uh, hanging with me today. Uh, we're going to be, unfortunately, once again, the red 2000 Honda Accord. Uh, this is all going back to the uh, idle and throttle problems I was having before. Uh, during the testing of that, uh, one of the things I had done is I had the Altel hooked up to the computer in the car, and I was reading the throttle position sensor, which was acting fine at uh, when I first cranked it up with no temperature in it, as soon as I let the car heat up, I started noticing that thing was hanging up around eight to 10%. So basically what this video is gonna be about today is gonna to be testing the throttle position sensor inside the car. I'm gonna show you how to do that with a voltmeter. It's very easy to do, but I'm also gonna end up taking this one off and putting a new one on. Uh, before you take your throttle off your car, the first thing I suggest you do is make sure that you have a gasket for it. Those things, when you, when you pull them off, they generally rip and tear the old gasket. So just make sure you have that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, move on to the live action. We're going to get started on uh, testing the TPS that's in this vehicle. All right, today I'm going to show you the uh, part that we're going after. This is the TPS or throttle position sensor. Uh, all it is, it's, it's a potentiometer like a volume control or anything like that. As it gets rotated, it outputs more voltage. Uh, this one starts at 0.5 as we've seen. And as you go to wide open throttle, it's producing 4.5 volts. Get the throttle body here. This is what we're going to be taking off the car here in just a minute. Uh, just get you familiar with the uh, parts of this. This is the actual throttle position sensor on the back. This is the map sensor on the top to meter the amount of air that's going in the side. And then, of course, you have your uh, hook up your linkage for your throttle and your cruise control over here. Uh, this on the bottom, uh, no need to take that off. All that is is it runs. Uh, cool it through this to warm the throttle body up so that way it's at operating temperature uh, some of your older hondas uh, could be equipped with what's called a fi fast idle throttle valve or fitv uh, this car does not have one uh, i know if you've been looking for idle problems with your car that that's popped up many times uh, don't go after something that your car doesn't even have the uh, ecu and the idle air control valve do the job of that uh, old part had a mechanical wax pellet inside of it uh, there's nothing mechanical about this at all other than the the actual uh, blade moving back and forth when you open and close the throttle everything else is electrical okay uh, let's move on I'm going to show you uh, before I took this out of the car how I tested my throttle position sensor and the actual removal of this from the vehicle Okay, with the air box and the uh, hose leading up to the throttle body off, it's going to make it a little bit easier to reach back here and get this connection, which is uh, has three terminals on it that connect to the back of the throttle position sensor. Squeeze and pull it off. You can see we have, again, three connectors down there. On the back of it, if you look, the three wires that go in, you have a, I can't tell with mine if that's yellow and then there's a red and on the end here there's a green. Uh, this is your power supply. It should give about five volts with the key on and this is your ground right here. So let's go ahead and test that. Take my test light come in here. I've got it connected to ground and I'm gonna go after the one for five volts. As you can see, I have five volts at the uh, power supply. All right, guys, and the uh, center, center terminal is the one that actually uh, tells the computer how, if the, how wide the throttle is open or closed. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come in through the back, and I'm going to use one of these right here. For, they're like for testing breadboards, but you can back probe also with them. So very gently get that in there. And once it's on, I'm going to put that back onto the... TPS. Now I'm going to take my positive lead from my multimeter and attach to the end of the piece here. And okay, here if you can see there, I do have 0.5 volts. And now when I go to wide open throttle, that should read at 4.5 volts. And there you have it, 4.5. So everything appears to be working correctly on this. Now let's get the car warmed up to operating temperature and see what it does. 
right, now I've got the uh, vehicle up to operating temperature. I shut it back off and then I turned the key back to run so we could watch our throttle position sensor uh, readings on our multimeter. As you can see here, it's reading now at five, 0.51, which isn't too terribly off. Give it wide open throttle. You see it's going to 0.45 and then a seven afterwards now. So it's just a little higher than it was. But what the car was doing the other day is it was sticking. It was actually, I was looking at it with my Alto. Uh, it was when the car was idling, it was idling fast. And the throttle position uh, was showing, I think, five to eight percent. And my foot wasn't on the gas pedal. So as you can see, of course, I could not get the car to act up for uh, filming purposes, a little camera shy, I guess. But uh, trust me, the, the uh, TPS was hung up around 8 to 10% when the car was at uh, full operating temperature. Uh, so that's why I'm actually going to change the throttle position sensor in this car right now. Here we go. So what I've got is a sticky, intermittently sticking um, throttle position sensor. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that off of the car, the whole throttle body off and uh, get so we can get to all that and I'm going to show you exactly what we're going after. Uh, before I pull the throttle body off I'm going to let this car uh, temperature go back down. I'm going to dr uh, drain some of the antifreeze out of it because there's you got water fittings on that throttle body which can cause it you'll have a little leak up there. So I'll come back when I'm ready to start pulling that off and show you how that's done. All right with the uh, temperature a little bit more manageable on this let's get in here and try to show you what I'm after. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take loose the map sensor on top and go after the connector for the throttle position sensor on the back kind of get those out of the way now what i need to do now you have two water connections you see them there i'm going to take both of those loose and then if you see you have at the top you have on the right is a 12 millimeter uh, bolt and on the left is a 12 millimeter nut and it's the, the, I'm not going to be able to get down low enough to show you. There you go. There's my the nut on this side. And on the other side, there's a 12 millimeter bolt. Okay, with the uh, water connections disconnected from the throttle body, just those two that I showed you, I'm going to move on to the linkage for the throttle and the cruise control. Uh, you don't have to take it off to make this work, but I'm going to make this easier. You see these two bolts on the back? These are the, the set. So you can set the... Uh, position of it. I'm going to just loosen the two back ones up. Those are 12 millimeters. And what that does is that takes tension off of these uh, wires that run to your linkage. Okay, with uh, these back bolts loose, I'm going to run these all the way down, the ones on the top. And that's not too hard to get it back right. You'll need to skip that little break they have in there because you need that break. Pull it all the way back and let it out. Do the same thing on the bottom one, then I'm going to show you how to disconnect it from the uh, throttle body. All right, with uh, both of those loose now, uh, all I have to do is you rotate the wire out from underneath here where it rides until you have it pointed up, and you just pull that straight out. you got like a little hole here that it, it fits into. That's what went after the uh, cruise control on the other side exactly the same way, except for it's just down a little bit lower here. All right, with everything disconnected now, I'm ready to go after the uh, bolts holding the throttle body to the intake manifold. Uh, it'll be a little tough to do this one-handed, uh, get the camera just right. All I'm going to do 12 millimeters, four in each one in each corner, four total. Take those all out, and then this is just going to pull off. Uh, if it's an older one, uh, the gasket is probably stuck between the two, so there'll probably be some ripping and tearing sounds. This is exactly why I told you to get a new gasket before you even got started. Okay, get this up on the bench and we'll show you what we got. All right, with this up on the bench now, we're going to show you the, the part we're going after is your throttle position sensor here. Uh, while you have your throttle body off, you also, if you have a dirty one, which this one is not because this only has about 1,500 miles on it, you'll need to get this opened up and get all the uh, carbon buildup around here out of it, as well as the plate and check the back of it too. Just just get as much off as you can. Uh, you don't have to be able to eat off of it, but it does need to be clean. So the first thing we will go over with the fast, I mean the throttle position sensor, you can see here when it comes from the factory, this thing is set. It's not supposed to be um, a repairable or replaceable part. You're supposed to buy the whole throttle body. And of course that's ridiculous for a $50 part. So what I'm gonna do is use a file and I'm gonna just file uh, 
channels into each one of these. You could probably do this with a Dremel also, just go across the top, and then that's gonna allow us to back that out. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. All right, this is the type of file that I'm gonna use. You can see it's triangular, so that's gonna allow me to get on there in, just in a very tight place and just to work that down. It's very soft, I've done it before, it's not too hard. So I'm gonna get these both done and I'm gonna come back when I've got that completed. Okay, as you can see, I've got those uh, grooves filed in now and I can just come in with a flathead screwdriver now. We'll make this look easy and start in doing it. I've already made sure they were loose. With those out of the way, I'm just ready to just pull that off and it just pulls straight out and there's a gasket associated with it that you're going to want to get cleaned up. Make sure you have that ready to go. So basically when you work your throttle, it's, there we go. And you can see that piece that's turning in there. That's what catches on the back of your throttle position sensor. to send the uh, computer the information it needs so it can detect where the uh, throttle position on the car is. Easy enough. Okay, so we're ready to put the uh, new throttle position sensor onto the throttle body now. Uh, the kit comes with actual uh, hex head screws instead of those rivet type screws. So that's gonna make it a little bit easier to work with. And it also has a gasket. And when you're putting this on, you're looking for this part here that has the um, place that catches this part of the throttle. So you just want to make sure that you set that part in that. Now you see nothing lines up, but that's okay. You, you, you would just twist the throttle body. So let's go ahead and get the uh, gasket on. Thing twisted. These come with a washer and a lock washer, so it will be the lock washer first, and then your washer. We're going to get these started, but I'm not going to tighten anything yet, because after we put this on the car, we have to calibrate it. We're going to need to be able to uh, slide this side to side. Okay, so you've got both of those screws installed. I can still turn the uh, throttle body side to side. So when I get it in the car, I'm gonna be able to calibrate it and then lock it down. I also have here the gasket for this. I need that part number, get the glare off. This one. All right, so we're gonna take our gasket. We're just gonna check it and make sure that everything lines up, all the bolt holes correctly and everything does uh, these two chambers down here they do not go through to the intake manifold so they're supposed to be blocked off so you don't have a space in between that so there you go this is ready to get mounted back up onto the car let's move over and show you that all right I'm ready to put the gasket back on so all we're gonna do this is the orientation for it here Just get that slid over the two studs coming out of the intake manifold. Right, and now I'm ready to put the actual throttle body back on. All right, with that in place, I'm ready to go ahead and start the uh, nuts onto these studs. Just got that hand tightened. We're going to go ahead and uh, adjust our new throttle position sensor now and get it calibrated correctly. All right, gentlemen, I have the uh, voltmeter set up in the same way I showed you at the beginning of the video. And uh, you can see at uh, no throttle at all, I'm reading 0.28, which is low. And when I go to wide open throttle, I'm reading 4.2, which is also low. So, what I'm going to have to do is actually rotate the new throttle position sensor until I can get this to read 0.5. Um, in order to bring it up, it's going to have to rotate that way. 
So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to try to get it to as close as to 0.5 as I can. Over. Back that up. It doesn't take much to go past what you're looking for. There's 0.51. Back it up just a hair more. That's probably good enough right there. So, okay, so at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach back there with the uh, hex wrench, the Allen wrench. It's a number four metric. And I'm going to go ahead and lock that down. And I'm going to keep an eye on my voltmeter to make sure that it stays there. After I get it locked down, uh, we'll check it again for uh, no throttle and wide open throttle. All right, gentlemen, after some finagling, I finally got that thing tightened on there the way it's supposed to be. Uh, we're reading 0.5 at no throttle. Go to wide open throttle, we should be, as soon as reading low, it needs to be 4.5. See if we can't screw around with this a little bit more, I'll get it right. First thing we need to do, we gotta get these uh, water connections hooked back up. Um, I think it's gonna be easier to get that back one first. Okay, with those two on, I'm going to go ahead and add the, uh, the actual bolts to the throttle body now. We're going to get those uh, torqued down. I'll give you the spec here in just a second. Let me look it up. All right, guys, that is going to be 16 foot-pounds. It's a uh, 12 millimeter. That's also 192 inch-pounds. So for you torque Nazis. camera's in the way and we're gonna do this um, crisscross from each other all right I'm gonna try my best to show you this um, we're gonna get the uh, throttle connector which is the gonna be the outside yeah two it's gonna be the one that goes on the outside here and since I have it loose all I'm gonna do is come into that circle go all the way through and then I'm gonna wrap that cable around the Little track it's got built for it and then I'm going to pull it back and get it in position same thing for the um, cruise control I don't know how well you're seeing this but all right got both of them installed I'm going to show you how to adjust those here on the uh, top Okay, for uh, starters, I'm just going to move these lower nuts back up to where they belong. Okay, so with uh, both of those nuts, I've just got them just past those little gaps it has in it. So what I'm going to do now, let me turn this so you can see, hopefully. Um, what I want to happen is, is I want to adjust that so this moves down until it's almost making contact with the throttle body. In order to do that, I'm just going to run down the top nut. And I'm going to watch as it, as it closes that down to closer to the throttle body itself. Just off camera here, I can see it. I got that one just about right. Once you have it where you, it needs to be, you're going to lock it down with the other nut. this and show you how well that's going to show up it was going after the throttle body I mean the uh, cruise control one and it just is barely off of the throttle body itself I'm going to do the exact same thing with the throttle itself try to get a little closer here and show you what I was about you can see how that is barely off of the throttle body itself I've just got a little bit of play in it same goes for the uh, cruise control perfectly set and one last thing before I forget and let's not forget the MAP sensor at the top now we're ready to put the air hose back on 
Okay, and before I forget, I need to also get the coolant back in, topped off and uh, bled out. If uh, you're a little unsure how to do that, my last video link up here, um, was replacing the radiator and it went over in detail how to bleed your coolant system out on this particular car. All right, we're gonna get that done and we get the car cranked up, see how she's working. Okay, here we are inside the car with the all tail hooked up. Uh, we have the throttle position uh, sensor pulled up what the car is reading the throttle to be and with no throttle at all that was set at 0.5 and as you can see it's minus 0.6 here so that's as close to zero as i'm going to be able to get it and then when i actually give it full throttle you see that goes to 74.4 with the original tps that went to 80 so i'm a little low there um i'm going to count that as chalk that up to aftermarket uh, if you can get the Honda part, please get the Honda part. I wasn't able to get it for this video, so here we go. All right, let's wrap this up. So there you have it. Uh, hopefully this is going to be the end of messing with the idle on this car. The only other thing I will mention that I haven't gone over in the last couple of videos is your PCV valve. Uh, do not discount that. It's on the, let's see if I can show you real quick. All right, so here on top of the valve cover, this is your PCV valve right here. Uh, you just pull that out. Uh, why the car is misbehaving, one of the things that you could try to do is to pull this out and cover this with your thumb. If the car stops misbehaving, then that's a good chance that you probably have a could have a bad PCV valve. And also, when you shake that, you should be able to hear it rattling. If you don't hear that thing rattling in there, then you may have a need for that less than $5 part. So there you have it, guys. I appreciate you visiting with me today. Uh, Hopefully that's going to be the end of the auto problems with the 2000 Accord. I'm ready to start driving this car every day and keep having these little things pop up. Even though the engine's being rebuilt, the car still has almost 320,000 miles on it, so things are going to go bad. But that's the price you pay for not having a, a car payment, so I'll take it. You guys have a great day, and I'll see you on the next one.